This is the only video you need to watch if you're trying to figure out how to become a full-time content creator. In this masterclass style video, you will learn how to establish what makes you stand out as a content creator so you can grow above your competition. You'll decide which platform will be best for you to focus on to see the results that you want to see. You'll learn how to post consistently without getting burnt out and how to set up one, two, or even 10 income streams so you can turn content creation into your full-time income. If you're here for the money-making part of this video, I will let you know right off the bat. I do have a free 40-page guide that breaks down 10 ways you can start making money today as a content creator and how to get each of those income streams started. So I'll link that guide down below. Yes, it's free. It's 40 pages explaining 10 different income streams. So you don't want to miss out on that. Here are the five steps for how to become a full-time content creator. Step number one, if you've done any research at all to figure out how to grow on Instagram, how to grow on YouTube, how to grow on TikTok, you've probably heard this magical formula. Pick a niche, be consistent, and provide value. Now we hear this all the time, and maybe we're at the point where we roll our eyes because we hear it so often. Like you've heard this advice, you apply it to your strategy, or you think you apply it to your strategy and nothing changes, it didn't work. Why did it not work? Why does everybody give this advice if it doesn't work? Two reasons, maybe they didn't explain it in the best way possible, or maybe you didn't apply it in the right way. The reason everybody says this is because it works. When implemented correctly, being consistent, provide value, niche down, like it works. So what our step one is going to be is defining your crux. What is your crux? This is the nucleus, the heart, the entire essence of your business. Without this, the rest of the steps won't matter because they won't work. If you skip this step, it would be like trying to bake a cake without flour, sugar, and eggs. Like it just, it just wouldn't make any sense. So what goes into defining your crux? You have your niche or niche, however you wanna say it, your target audience and your positioning. These are the three things that go into your crux. Let's start with the term niche, niche, because we've heard it before. I don't wanna spend too much time on this. I know you've probably already heard the spiel, so we're just gonna breeze right through it. According to our trusty Google, niche is a specialized segment of a market for a particular kind of product or service. Most of the time what happens is people will focus on the first half of the definition, specialized segment of the market. That's where labels like fitness, fashion, travel, beauty comes in. And we don't wanna forget about the second half of the definition, which is for a particular kind of product or service. This means you answer questions like what kind of blank? Who is my message for? So an example of an actually defined niche is not fitness. It's at home fitness for moms. Boom. So that sums up your niche and your target audience. Look at us, we're banging through this. So your target audience, who is your content for? That says at home fitness for moms. Your target audience is for moms. We kind of know that. I think a lot of people that might be review for us. So let's jump into the positioning. This final piece of your crux is often overlooked because it can be the hardest one to answer. Your positioning is how you present yourself on any platform in a way that makes you unique and different from the rest of your competitors. I don't mean being fake, okay? We're not being fake. Because your uniqueness is you. It's you, it's yourself. And the reason why it's so hard for people to see any uniqueness, I'm, I'm sure right now some of you are watching and you're like, okay, well, what's my uniqueness? I'm not unique, I'm just me. That's normal to feel that way because something that is so normal to you, it's gonna feel like, oh, that's just, that's nothing. But to other people, it's gonna be like, wait, that is so different. For example, when I could not figure out what my niche or niche was going to be on social media, I was talking to my husband and I was like, what am I even good at? Like, I don't know what to post about. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to do online and how to create a, a name for myself. What, what am I good at? And he was the one that was like, oh, you're really good at teaching and explaining things. You're really good at Instagram. You're really good at organizing. And to me, I was like, well, that's just like easy stuff. That's no duh, like everybody can do that. So to me, it was the most mundane, easy thing, but to other people, that's not the norm. It's not maybe the easiest to teach on a platform. It's not the easiest to grow on Instagram. So I think when you ask other people, like what would you come to me for advice on? What are some things that make me unique? What are some quirks that I have? What are my interests? What am I good at? 
finding from other people's perspectives those things about you would help me bring to life of like, oh, this is how I can position myself in a unique way on social media. And then to wrap it all in like a perfect bow, your crux, it's also just like you being you, which is probably the hardest thing to do on social media for some reason, because we see other people acting a certain way. So we think, oh, we need to present ourselves this way in order to be successful. That's not true. The more you create, the more you'll find what's true and authentic to you. So even even if you can't define your niche or your niche or your target audience or what your crux is, if you can't define it, just start creating and posting to whatever platform you choose so that you could figure out, oh, that felt really good or that felt fake. <laughs> and then you'll be able to identify what comes naturally to you and what sort of content you'll focus on. Now I'm going to explain the importance of this strategy of like, oh, why would I niche down? Why would I have a target audience? Why do I want to focus on these things? I want to explain that. But before I explain the importance of it, I I also want to say these tips that I'm sharing in this video, this is just what's worked for me, what's worked for my students and what I've seen work for other people. I'm teaching this because I know it gets results. I'm not teaching this because I think it's the only way to grow. There's so many ways to grow and so many strategies out there. But these tips that I'm teaching, I know they work because they've worked for me. They've worked for my students. They work when you do them in this order. So that's the reason I'm teaching them in this order. I don't think it's my way or the highway at all <laughs> for any means. So I just want to say I'm aware there's other strategies out there and you don't have to do blah, blah, blah to be successful. But this is proven to work, not just for me, but for dozens of my students as well. So the reason you niche down and niche down is because every platform thrives on an algorithm, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and that algorithm needs to understand who you are and what your content's about. So if you're posting consistently in one topic and consistently feeding the algorithm, hi, I like to post about coffee. I like to post about coffee. I like to post about coffee. Then that algorithm's going to be like, oh, okay, anyone who's interested in coffee, we're gonna start showing your videos too. So that that's the importance of picking a niche and that's why everybody says it. It's not because it's the only strategy that works. It's just, it'll get you quicker results because you feed the algorithm one specific thing and the algorithm's like, oh, cool, thank you. A common mistake that I see people make or my students, like I get a lot of people coming up to me like, Millie, why am I not growing? How come I'm not landing brand collaborations? And when I go to their profile to do a little audit, their positioning is all over the place. At a glance, I'm not able to tell who they are, what they do, or how they help, what value they provide. When someone goes to your profile, whether it's a potential follower or a brand, they need to be able to glance at your page and immediately understand what you have to offer. Your profile photo, username, bio, your content, all four of those things need to be in alignment for somebody to easily decide, yes, I wanna follow them. So let's say your platform of choice is TikTok. If you have like a little selfie as your profile photo and your username is Cami Whammy 7222259, and your bio just says, live in my best life, peace sign, with all of your content about my coffee that I had today. Oh, we went to the Bahamas and this is what we saw. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I just got this in the mail, that's crazy. So like, it's all over the place. There's not really a reason for somebody to follow you, even if you get one video to go viral. Even if you get a video to go viral, there's not really a reason somebody wants to follow you. That viral video is gonna pop off. They're gonna go to your page and they're gonna be like, well, there's no other value for me here, so I'm not even gonna follow this person. So you need to make it clear from the get-go who you are, what you do, the value you provide. For my content creators that I teach, I like to make sure, hey, your profile photo, that needs to match the industry you're in. If you're baking, maybe it's a picture of you in the kitchen with like cookies, I don't know. Just make it on brand, on theme, tell a story with your profile photo. What do you want to be known for and start doing that thing? Post that thing, start becoming known for it now. If you want to be a baker on TikTok, set up your profile photo so that it's professional baker. You know, you're like, this is me. Make sure your username explains that. Baking with Katie. <laughs> And your bio says posting daily recipes or posting weekly dessert ideas. You know, like when someone presses that follow subscribe button, when somebody clicks that, tell them exactly why they should follow you. What are they gaining from pressing that follow button? And then your content, you want your content 
to be binge worthy Netflix style content, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. If you're revolving your content around a niche or niche, it makes your content that much more easily bingeable if one video goes viral, which again is a benefit of narrowing down on a topic. If this video of your coffee recipe goes viral and you have 20 other coffee recipes that you posted over the past three months that never popped off, that one coffee viral video will get those other videos traction naturally because you already were posting that sort of content. And it will make it more likely for people to follow you because they're like, oh, they post this type of content all the time. That's exactly what I wanna see. Okay, step number two, if you want to become a full-time content creator, now that you have your crux defined, your next step is going to be creating an email list. Literally. Don't skip this step or even if you think this doesn't apply to you. If you think this doesn't apply to you, it does. If you think this does apply to you, it does. Literally everybody, anybody, everybody, I don't care who, what, when, where you are, you need an email list. So what is an email list? An email list is basically a list of email contacts that you own and you could email them whenever you want whenever you want, about anything you want. You don't have to rely on an algorithm because when you send an email, you know 100% of these people are gonna get your email. There's no algorithm to compete with. You own these contacts, they're your diehard true fans. That's an email list. The reason we start our email list before we grow a platform is because your email list will grow with you. I had a student, she reached out to me. She's like, Millie, I wanna grow an Insta. Let's do 10,000 followers, huzzah. And I was like, yes, let's do it. Email list. She was like, why? And I said, just do it. So we made an email list, freebie for her audience. And after we made the email list, literally took a day, it took a day. It doesn't have to be fancy or hard. One day, took a day, email list is done. The next day we could start doing content creation and growth. She grew 40,000 followers in three months. And because she started with her email list, the email list also grew with her. She had over 2000 people on her email list and she was like, cool, I'm ready to quit my job. Let me post my coaching opportunity. She emailed her email list. Hey, I'm starting coaching, sold out, immediately replaced her corporate job income, put in her notice at work and is currently doing coaching full-time. She does not have a corporate job anymore. She's doing coaching full-time and that's because she started with her email list first. So how do you start an email list? What do you do? Basically, you want to create a free offer for your audience where they could get some instant result, some instant action, some sort of instant gratification. And every freebie is going to look a little bit different depending on your niche industry. So what do you offer? First, you're gonna look at your competitors or niche neighbors who are the other people in your market. What sort of free offers are they giving their audience? Do they do a little quiz on their website? Do they do an e-guide or an e-book, like download my cheat sheet, download my templates, download my e-book, download this free training. Like what is that free offer that people in your industry are offering because it's probably proven to work and then do your own version of it. Don't consume theirs, don't copy anybody but create your own freebie for your audience. If again, back to the baking example, if you want to grow a baking TikTok, maybe you create 10, a little downloadable that's like five secret hacks to make your baking better. Five secret baking tips to instantly transform your cookies. You know, like something like that, where it's just like, okay, cool, they download it, they see that, oh, what if I sift my dry ingredients first? and then I do room temperature butter instead of cold butter, or maybe it should be cold and not room temperature. You know, like those little tips that you have that like, oh, I'll just make a Canva workbook, save it as a PDF, and then let people download it. Doesn't have to be hard. Okay, so now that you pick your freebie, what you're gonna give to your audience for free, maybe it's a video and you just set up Zoom, you recorded a 30 minute free training, that's it. How does somebody download it? A common email host that people use is MailChimp. I know that's a really common one because it's the most cost effective, but the one that I actually recommend is either Flowdesk or Stan. Most email hosts, you have to pay per email list subscriber. So it's like, oh, if you have a thousand subscribers, 
subscribers, you pay this much. But if you could get up to 5,000 subscribers, you have to pay this much. Uh oh, you're growing, you have to pay more. So that's typically how it works. Flowdesk, it's a one payment thing. No matter how many email list subscribers you have, Flowdesk. But if you want like a one all in one tool and you're just starting out, you're like, I want done's better than perfect, scrappy, let's do this. Stand store. You literally just create a stand store, which is like your link in bio, and it says choose product or create a product. You do your freebie, upload your freebie to your stand store, and then people can download your freebie through stand. You add a product, you're gonna select like a lead magnet. So you'll do the lead magnet. This is where you're gonna upload your PDF. So you made a PDF on Canva. I love using Canva. You could literally look up like e-guide template, plug in your information, download as a PDF, upload your PDF to Stan. You get to make it free, set the, what people have to fill out. So I just do name, email address. You don't have to do phone number and then set, put it up in your store. People can literally download your freebie through Stan and then you get their email address so that later down the line, you can email them through an email host like MailChimp, Flowdesk, but you don't have to have that set up now. You could just get your store set up. So you're gonna put your link in bio, your Stan store in your bio on TikTok, on Instagram, or if you're a YouTuber, you're gonna put it at the top of all your video descriptions in your pinned comments on the, there's like the banner of your channel. They have those links there. You could put your, store there. That's where you're linking this and a call to action of download my five tips for baking easy. I don't know. So you put a call to action, free 40 page downloadable, free guide, five tips for blah, blah, blah. Make it simple, call to action. Now before you're growing, your email list is gonna grow with you. I know I kind of was all over the place with explaining the email list thing. So if you want to actually see a step-by-step -step walkthrough of like, okay, how do I actually start, grow and serve my email list? I do have a free downloadable that you could use multiple pages. It walks you through, okay, starting my list. What freebie do I create? How do I create a freebie? How do I set it up so that it automates and sends out? And then how do I grow my list from there? So if you want the full explanation of email list, how to start, grow, serve, download it. I'll link it down below in the description and in the pinned comments. Did you catch that example? For those of you who wanna be YouTubers, I'm mentioning my freebies in my videos so that it's an evergreen ad almost for myself in every video, okay? Now that you have your crux defined, you have your email list started, let's pick a platform. There's a lot of opinions out there on platforms. Should you have one? Should you have multiple and diverse your platforms and post everywhere? There is no right or wrong answer here, but what I like to teach my students is pick one platform to go all in on. Because if you're trying to grow on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram, you're not giving any of them your full attention. You're doing like 33% energy here, 33% energy. 33% energy here. That means those platforms are going to grow. Like they're going to be like, 33% return back to you, Millie. So if you're just like, okay, I'm gonna pick one platform, I'm gonna go all in and you put 100% energy into Instagram. Instagram will see your 100% energy and reward you tenfold. So how do you know which platform to choose first before you diversify your platforms? It's gonna look different for everyone, y'all. It really comes down to what sort of content do you enjoy creating? Like truly at the core of yourself, do you enjoy Enjoy creating? Do you like doing YouTube videos? Do you like doing vlogs? Do you like editing long form content? If you like that, YouTube's gonna be your thing. Now, short form content, you got a few options. If you're like, I do like short form video, like I wanna use my phone, I don't want a camera, I just wanna use my phone, it's easy, it's in my pocket, I'm on the go. You got some options. You have TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube Shorts. So it's like, okay, which one do I focus on? If you're a business or um, a content creator influencer, Instagram, is great for that. I'm not saying the other two aren't, let me explain. Instagram is serving specifically businesses and creators right now. If you're like an artist or an everyday user, you're kind of more casual vlog lifestyle, Instagram is not gonna be that place for artists and songwriters and musicians, actors. That's not gonna be the place for you. Instagram is catered specifically to businesses and content creators who want to be the face of their business. Not like the products, but like content creators who wanna be the face. Anywho, so like that's what Instagram is focusing on right now. So you can see success with Instagram. I also think it's a great entry level tool. If you're like, oh, I'm not very advanced. Instagram's really great entry level. You have photo, story, reels, 
You could do video if you want. You don't have to do videos. You could DM your subscribers. So it's a great all-in-one starter platform. YouTube is probably the highest level of commitment because YouTube does not give you instant gratification. If you're somebody who's like, I want instant gratification, Instagram or TikTok is gonna be your option, but YouTube doesn't do that. If you're in it for the long haul, YouTube's your long haul evergreen platform. YouTube's my favorite platform. Yes, I did say it's like the most time consuming, hardest long haul strategy, but it is my favorite platform because I feel like YouTube really listens to its creators, pays its creators well, and your content continues to pay you money. Where like I have a video from three years ago that makes me money even to this day. So I like their strategy for creators best. So I like long form content, educational content where I can teach. It makes sense for me to be here creating content that's search friendly because it's a search engine. So for me, this is a platform that makes sense. This sort of horizontal style shooting, long form videos with a camera, that's been in my nature and something I've always loved. So YouTube makes sense. Now let's talk about TikTok. TikTok, if your target audience is Gen Z, TikTok's the place to be. Even millennials, very active over there. It's also a platform where the more you post, the more you grow. TikTok is the newest platform Form, it might be the easiest to go viral on because it is so new. The algorithm is a little bit more generous. As of recording this video, at least, TikTok really does rely on consistency. For me, when I did my TikTok testing, like the only reason that I was able to like grow so quickly on TikTok and grow 30,000 followers in 30 days was because I was posting two to three dimes a day every day for 30 days. And it was exhausting, it was hard, and I don't think I could realistically keep up with that. So my Instagram has kind of lulled because I post maybe three times a week. And I don't think TikTok likes that very much. I don't know, maybe my content just sucks. That could be it. So anywho, that's kind of like an overview of each platform. Again, there's really no right or wrong answer of like which platform should I be on? Just listen to your gut and, and you'll know, you'll know. Start creating a little bit here, a little bit there. See what feels the most natural to you and follow your joy. Follow the things that bring you to life and um, yeah, pick one platform, start with it. And then as that platform starts to pick up traction, that's when you can diversify your platforms using tools like Metrical. So Metrical is also the sponsor of this video. I've been working with Metrical for I think a year now. I don't know, maybe it's been like eight months, but I I truly love Metrical. We use it with my team and my business and that's why I wanted to continue to partner with them throughout this new year. If you don't know, Metrical is like this all-in-one tool where you can post to literally every social media platform and track analytics for those platforms. So like for Instagram, you can schedule posts to auto post for you. You can schedule TikToks to post. You can schedule YouTube videos to post. Even LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter, like you can schedule posts and schedule your social media content, your content calendar, your study analytics, like literally it can do everything. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with Metrical. We use them specifically in my team. I have a content manager. We use them for studying analytics. At the end of every month, we download an analytic report and it'll tell me which posts performed well, which ones didn't, which ones had the most engagement, which ones didn't. That way my team and I can adjust our content strategy moving forward of being like, oh, looks like our audience doesn't really like this topic right now. They really want content like this. So we download those reports and it's really, really, really cool. So when you're ready to start diving diversifying your platform and maybe you have a bunch of TikToks that are like, okay, let's get these to Reels and YouTube Shorts. You're gonna use SnapTik.app to remove the watermark and then you'll upload your video to Metricool to auto post to Instagram Reels. That way you can post consistently onto any platform that you want. Yes, Metricool is free. So I'll leave a link to them down below. However, if you are a social media manager and you manage like multiple Instagram accounts, like you have like five Instagram accounts and five TikTok accounts, then you do have to get their paid version. But for all of us entrepreneurs, content creators, who we just have like our Instagram and our TikTok and our YouTube channels that we're managing ourselves, it's free. So use the link down below and create an account with Metrical. Okay, now that you've picked your platform as a content creator, step three is picking your posting cadence. What is 
Cadence, first of all. Cadence is a musical term that means a regular beat or rhythm. When creating your posting cadence, you're gonna figure out how often you want to be posting within a 30 day time period that you can realistically keep up with. This is where you hear things like be consistent. It might be another like eye roll term because everybody says, oh, you have to be consistent if you wanna da 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 da. But what does be consistent actually mean? Here are two definitions of the word consistent. Acting or done in the same way over time, unchanging in nature, standard, or effect over time. Key phrase here, over time. You need to be posting at a rate that you specifically can realistically stick to over time. Your consistency is not measured against anyone else's consistency. It's weighed against yourself. So if posting every day is unrealistic for you, then don't do it. Don't do it. Notice those definitions didn't say consistency means posting every day. <laughs> no, post three times a week if you have to. Create a schedule that you can stick to for six months. Six months, what's that schedule look like? So now that you've kind of like picked a cadence and we know the whole, oh, you gotta be consistent. How do you actually do it? How do you be consistent? The answer is simple. Take a break from your current strategy that you have to create your new strategy. I promise stopping your posting or whatever you're doing on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, stopping to create a new strategy is not gonna make or break your channel. You've picked your cadence, you're gonna figure out your content types, and then you're gonna batch. Now the reason I have figure out your content types in there is because if you pick Instagram to grow, there's a lot of content types on there. You have stories, in-feed posts, that can be graphic carousels, photos, reels, but you wanna choose those content types. Same thing with YouTube. Are you gonna do long form YouTube or shorts? TikTok, you don't really have to choose a content type. It's just like short form video or video, vertical video. So depending on the platform you choose, you have your cadence, which is three times a week maybe. And then you have picking the content types and then you have batch. So let's do an example. If you wanna post three times a week and there's four weeks in a month, that means you have to post 12 times in that month. Now, if let's say we, we picked Instagram, what are those 12 pieces of content? Let's say you do four reels, four photos, and four Instagram graphics or carousels. And then you're gonna batch create those pieces of content. Let's say you have four photos already in your camera roll, easy peasy. You're gonna take a day and write captions for them. Next day, you're gonna record four reels. And then the next day, you're gonna spend time on Canva creating four graphics. You have one month of content that you made in three days that's ready to post for you. So when you take a break, you're able to take a step back, see your month out of view, plan content accordingly ahead of time, and then batch create that content. Now, I know it's gonna look a little bit different on every platform. For TikTok, for example, sometimes TikTok relies on trends. So you can't just like record a trend today and then post that video next month because it's already outdated by that point. So on all of these platforms, I like to have a mixture of trending content search friendly content and content that is kind of for my own self enjoyment. It's just whatever the heck I wanted to do. Step four is posting for your platform, which I guess also goes into knowing your platform. Take the time to educate yourself, become knowledgeable in that platform. If you want to post on TikTok, Take the time to figure out what makes it breathe, what makes it come to life. TikTok strategies, look up TikTok tips, TikTok strategies, everything that you can do to educate yourself on TikTok, do. Same thing for YouTube. If you choose YouTube, educate yourself on the platform and the users. How do people interact on YouTube? Why are they on YouTube? What are they looking for on YouTube? Same thing with Instagram. Educate yourself on the platform so that you can almost be an Instagram expert yourself. Like maybe you're, niche or niche, it's fitness. It's not even related to Instagram, but you know the platform like the back of your hand so that if your friend's like, how do I start on Instagram and how can I grow? You know those answers because you did the research to figure it out and you know how to do it yourself. You're almost like a expert at two things. You're gonna be an expert in your niche and in industry and you're gonna be an expert on the platform that you choose to grow on. When you understand that platform specifically, you'll know what posts make sense for that platform. 
for me, there's some things that I'll post to Instagram that like, I know I'm not gonna post to TikTok. Like I give a lot of Instagram tips on Instagram. Those don't perform well on TikTok because people on TikTok, they left Instagram. They're like, I don't even like Instagram, peace out. They're here trying to grow on a new platform. So on TikTok, I'm posting how to grow on TikTok. Same thing with like my YouTube shorts. I've noticed my YouTube shorts that use TikTok trends, people don't like it. <laughs> They're like offended by my sense of humor or something. The TikTok trends that I try to bring over to YouTube don't work. On YouTube, people actually want to be educated and informed and they want answers and they want the juice, they want the goodness. So on YouTube shorts, when I'm talking and teaching, people like that a little bit better than like, some lip syncing, I don't know, thing. So post for the platform. And I know that kind of contradicts the whole like recycle your content to other platforms. You can recycle your content. I recycle my content all the time, all the time. That's not a bad thing to do, but I'm just saying when you're starting out, like don't start out with like a bunch of recycled content. Post intentionally for that platform to figure out, okay, what does this platform love? What does it not love? What does my audience like to see on this platform? Like really be intentional with the platform you're on. I think the content strategy that will never fail, no matter what platform you're on, is SEO strategy. And I say SEO strategy loosely because a lot of people don't like that term or they're like, ah, that's a big word, I don't like it. Somebody. <laughs> who hated that word for a really long time because it scared me. But basically your content, content that will never fail to perform well is content that your audience wants. Let me explain. You know your target audience. Your target audience or my target audience are content creators. I want to get inside their mind and predict what are they looking for on YouTube? What are they looking for on TikTok? Not what do I think they would like? No, what are they actually looking for? What do they need? How can I help? I'm thinking about my target audience first, not what sort of content I wanna make because I think it would be fun. Think about your audience and create content for them be generous to them and use the words that they want to use or that they're using when creating your content. So I'm gonna use words like, this is how to become a full-time content creator because that's eye-catching. Content creators are like, yes, I wanna know that. And within there, I'm gonna give tips like, start your email list because I've already captured attention. I'm not gonna use things like, this is why it's important to have an email list for content creators because content creators are gonna see that, they're gonna be like, oh, I don't need an email list. Those aren't words that they're using to capture their attention. So like from their perspective, what are words that would capture their attention and then deliver on that promise? All of those words that I use, I get from search engines. So YouTube, Pinterest, TikTok, Google, just I look to see what terms are being looked up. I'll go to TikTok and I'll type in TikTok tips and see what's recommended. TikTok tips for growth, TikTok tips and tricks. And I'm like, oh, those are the words that I should be using in my TikTok videos. Even on TikTok, you could look up coffee recipes, click coffee recipes, and down below it'll say others searched for, and that's TikTok literally telling you, hey, people are looking for this, make a video on it. So that's a strategy that is going to work regardless of what platform you're on. SEO strategy, basically, what are you doing to get in front of other people's eyes? Step number five, adapt. Especially if you're somebody who picked Instagram, my Lord, good luck. Just kidding, I'm on Instagram, I get it. I teach Instagram, adapt. If a platform releases a new feature, be a first adapter. Be a first adapter to those new features because they want to favor and highlight that new feature to its audience. And if you're somebody who is using a feature first, you're gonna be one of the OG creators that kind of like made that thing happen. So when Instagram released Reels, a lot of people were resistant to change and they were like, no, that's not Instagram. Instagram's photo only. And people really resisted it for a long time, but it was the creators who accepted change and hopped on Reels right away who saw the quickest growth. So when a platform releases something new, jump on it, try it out, see if it's going to benefit you, your journey, 
your business, whatever it is. Step six. I think I have more steps than I thought, but it's okay. It makes this video more valuable, I guess. Step six, let's set up a consistent income stream. If you want content creation to be your full-time job, you're gonna have to make money off of it, right? Because if you're not making money with it, then it's just a hobby or it's just an expensive hobby because you're spending a lot of time. Time is money and it's just a hobby. And that's not a bad thing. I will say some people like you just want to create content because you love it and you don't care about the money and that's fine. Have at it, like no judgment, that's amazing. For me, I put a lot of time into my content creation and I'm giving a lot of value. So making money back from it is a goal that I have because I want to do this full time. I don't want to have any other job. I love what I do. I love making YouTube videos. I love creating content and teaching. So if I can make money doing that, that's just like a dream come true. Everybody's going to have different income goals. Maybe you just want to make like a couple hundred a month and that's totally okay. Maybe you want to turn it into a six, seven figure business and that's totally okay. Both are possible. You can do whatever you want. It's your, it's your choice. It's your business. It's your content creation journey. Let's just make you some money. There are a bunch of ways to make money as content creators. You can do brand collaborations, which is where basically brands pay you to post about them on your platform. You can create UGC, which is user generated content. You don't have to be any sort of influencer to do UGC. You could have zero followers and make money off of UGC because basically user generated content is you created a video that a brand wants to use for an ad. Maybe it's like a selfie recorded video. You're talking about this coffee product. You're like, oh my gosh, I love this. Let me show you how to use it. You show how to use it. It's like 30 seconds rave review and you want to sell it to them and be like, hey, here's some UGC. You want to buy it off of me? You could use it in ads and anywhere you want. So that's UGC. They just pay you to create content for them. You don't have to post it on your profile. Affiliate marketing, where anyone who uses a link where you're an affiliate for, you receive commission anytime somebody purchases through that link. There's also other types of affiliate income, which is in a completely other video. You can watch this video here, which I talk about affiliate income and how to make money as an affiliate. So you could sell digital products. I have a bunch of digital products like templates, eBooks, presets, like photo presets, any sort of digital product, physical products. You could even have merch. I use Spreadshop for my merch. Not sponsored, I love Spreadshop, but yeah, Spreadshop's freaking fantastic. If you don't have a Spreadshop and you wanna have merch, that's the way to go. You could sell online courses. I consider courses to be separate from digital products because it's not a digital downloadable. It's like actually online education program. You could have a membership where people pay monthly to be a part of your membership. NFTs, this is like a fancier one that I don't know a lot about, but it's still an option for some content creators. Coaching, you could offer some sort of coaching to your audience, whether it's like fitness, mindset, fashion, all the things, or even selling a service. So you can sell a service, like maybe you're gonna be a VA for a little bit, a virtual assistant. For me, when I left my corporate job to do this full time, I actually had an in-between stage where I was a VA for a little bit. So I didn't go from like corporate to full-time creator. I went corporate, nine to five, getting paid salary to I'm gonna be a VA for a little bit while I, I'm also working on my business and I was making money with my business and as a VA. So I was helping do social media strategy for another business and social media posting. And I also organized a business's uh, projects because I was a project manager in corporate. So I had like a few VA roles that were paying me and I was like on three month contracts with them. And then that helped me transition to full-time creator. So you can offer a service of something that you're really, really good at and comes naturally to you or something that maybe you really like inbox management and you like to organize emails and other people don't. I hate it. You can literally offer that as a service of, hey, I'll organize your inbox every week. I'll go in, organize it for you, keep it nice and clean. We'll sign a three month contract and you'll pay me this much per month. So there are so many ways to make money as a creator. So fantastic, love it. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but I do have a guide that talks through all of those 10 ways. The first steps, what you gotta do, how to actually like take those first actions to make money doing those things. So download that guide to see the 40 pages of how to make money. But what I wanna talk about is like your strategy for making money. Because a lot of people, they feel kind of icky, they get the ick, 
trying to be salesy and you don't have to be salesy as a content creator. What I like to do and what I tell my students is pick one stream of income at first, just like you pick one platform to go in on and you do 100% on that platform. As that starts to build traction, you add another platform. Same thing with your income streams. Pick one income stream that you're like, okay, I wanna make money with this and really figure that one out. And then as that one gets traction, add on another, add on another. The trick is to have multiple income streams bringing you multiple figures per month. So when I started out, I was doing brand collaborations. When I started to make a consistent income with brand collaborations, no, it wasn't like thousands of dollars. It was a couple hundred dollars every month, but it was consistent. Once I figured out how to do it consistently, I added on my VA work and then I had brand collabs and VA work as a consistent income. There's two other strategies that you could use, affiliate marketing and for selling digital products. If you have like an Amazon storefront and you're a content creator that does like Amazon hauls or fashion hauls, put your links everywhere. Put it in your link and bio, put it in blog posts, put it in your YouTube videos, put it in descriptions, put it everywhere you can. If you're on Instagram, make a highlight of your recommended products, make a highlight and categorize it. A highlight on your favorite Amazon jewelry, favorite Amazon fitness outfits, you know, categorize it, put all your affiliate links there, place your links everywhere. Same thing with digital products, place those links everywhere and then just naturally talk about it throughout your content. It doesn't have to be like a, hi everyone, I have this product and it is so cool. Like you don't have to sell the way you don't wanna sell. Just like on your stories, be like, oh yeah, I have this thing I was working on. If you wanna download it and just bring up your products once a week. Just get comfortable bringing it up once a week on stories. Maybe find a way to mention it in a TikTok and be like, you can get grab that in my, you can't say link in bio on TikTok, I don't think. So you can say bink and lie something like that. So just like find ways to naturally mention it over and over. I think one of the biggest things that I did for my YouTube channel for increasing product sales was putting my freebies and my products in my YouTube description. In every single YouTube description, I have a freebie and a product and my course is linked so that no matter what video somebody is watching of mine, if they want to read more, they are seeing other options and other ways to learn from me. So just like go link crazy and put links everywhere. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. If you're still having a hard time deciding, oh, I don't know which platform to be on, watch this video next where I break down the pros and cons of Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok to help you decide which one you should be focusing on. If you have any other questions regarding Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok, check out my YouTube library. I literally have all the resources, free resources that you could ever find right over there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Come on. Let's do the whole follow your joy by thing. Let's do the follow your joy. She was on my lap the whole time and I bet you didn't even notice. Okay, so we say follow your joy. Bye.